Well, friends, we'll get started. Thank you uh, for, for uh, logging on. Glad you were able to do that today. And uh, again, I want to thank all those who have shared with us uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks while I've been gone. And then uh, for Jerry and Quentin uh, facilitating our prayer time. Appreciate you guys very much. Uh, I feel like I can just walk away anytime and it's all taken care of. So <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh, really appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, hear from our speakers every week. And uh, a few weeks ago, I asked Daniel and uh, Renita Kane if they could share with us uh, on, uh, at their convenience. And uh, it worked out for Daniel to share this week, and Renita is going to share next week. Uh, I sent you a little bit of their uh, uh, background, their experiences. Uh, I have gotten to know them uh, through FAS and just deeply, deeply appreciate and admire their, their gifts and graces uh, of ministry. I, uh, uh, I'm always, I won't say envious, but let me just say I admire. How's that? Instead of envious, I admire uh, people who can just do so many things so well. Uh, and they do. And uh, for uh, us to have uh, them on this team and then to have this opportunity, uh, it really is uh, a blessing to us all. Daniel is serving as pastor over in uh, Frankfort, Kentucky, uh, as well as many other things that they, they do uh, in ministry. So we appreciate his taking time. We know that right now uh, pastors have so much of a challenge <laughs> in ministry. And so we want to pray for Daniel and for all our pastors as we have been continued uh, in this time. And we'll get to that as we share prayer concerns. But uh, again, welcome to all. Thank you. You can join us. Daniel, I'm just going to turn it over to you. You lead us. Uh, and uh, when you finish, I, I, I will kind of open it up if anybody wants to respond, and then we'll go right into our time of prayer. And we usually ask our speaker then to close us in prayer whenever uh, the time comes. Okay. So Daniel, let me just turn it over to you and uh, thank you again for uh, sharing with us today. Sure. Well, uh, let me open our time together in prayer today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that you've given us. And I just pray that you would make it profitable for your kingdom and uh, that you would uh, speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in thinking about what I wanted to share this morning, um, I'm, I'm going to share a little bit of where I'm at processing with a, a class that I'm taking. I'm taking a class on the theology of John Wesley. And uh, I have never had a class on John Wesley before. Um, so I went to Wesley Biblical Seminary and never took a class on John Wesley because I, was, uh, I got an MA in biblical literature. I was not in systematic theology or that. And so I just had to take the two semesters of systematic theology with Bill Urey. And uh, that was it, nothing of John Wesley, except of course that uh, there's the, uh, you're surrounded with that paradigm at all times, but not specifically. And so um, in the last couple weeks, I've read a biography of Wesley and, and last week I, I outlined three sermons of Wesley, one of those being justification by faith. And it just has really helped to clarify some things for me. I am not a systematic theologian. Uh, I, I don't think that way. I like uh, biblical theology more. Um, but, but Wesley has been helpful to me. Now, this is probably going to be old hat to, to most of you, but I'm processing it, some of this stuff as if for the first time, and it's really helping me. I've, I've kind of been an artist along the way more than a theologian, uh, but this is really helping me. And so I want to share my process here. Um, and uh, I want to start off, the main thing I want to say is to talk about salvation as having two great branches. One of, uh, re of kind of like the reckoning branch, which is justification, where we're counted righteous, where God forgives us. And the second one, a realization branch, where there is true righteousness and holiness. Um, and uh, so you may have heard before, I've heard many times, <clears throat> people use the phrase, for instance, uh, saved and sanctified. Uh, I've been saved and sanctified. And uh, there's a couple of things about that language that uh, even actually obscures the clarity of Wesley's teaching. Uh, the first thing is it, make, it, it makes sanctification look like a tack on to salvation. 
I'm saved and I'm sanctified. So, well, if I'm saved, uh, it's almost like uh, I'm in. Why do I necessarily need sanctification? Because I'm saved. Uh, the, the other thing is that most of my life, I have not had an assurance of salvation. It has been troubling to me. And I think the thing that has been so troubling is that I know instinctively that salvation must include cleansing from sin, it must include addressing the problem of sin in the heart, in the life. Otherwise, what am I saved from? Is it just that I'm saved from God's wrath, but the object of God's wrath, the sin in me, is still lodged in me? Well, then how, how in, in what way? That's such a partial salvation. How do I go on and live my life at peace, knowing that the thing that, that angers God is a part of me and lodged in me? So, um, <clears throat> and so here, I want to just take a really quick look at these two branches, the reckoning branch and the realization branch. The reckoning branch, uh, in this justification by, by faith, Wesley points out very helpfully to me that uh, justification is not the making of us actually righteous. Uh, it, it, that's actually sanctification. That's part of the realization branch. Uh, justification is not the clearing us from accusation, uh, either from Satan. Evidently, that must have been something floating around at his time. It's not that justification clears us from the accusation Satan brings against us, uh, like he brought against Job. And it doesn't clear us from the accusation that the law brings against us. Now, there, may, there, is a, 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 there is a saving from that, but Wesley points out that the language of the scriptural language of justification does not address the accusation brought against us by the law. God, in fact, gave the law so that it would do a work. And, uh, and God, and then justification is not God thinking me righteous when I'm not righteous. Uh, it, and it does not include, because God is not deceived, he gave the law so that I would see my condition and he knows my condition. Uh, justification is not God confounding me with Christ or mistaking me with him so that when he looks at me, he sees Christ. Uh, he can, Wesley says, he can no more confound me with Christ than he can confound me with Abraham or David. I am not that person and God knows I'm not. And uh, so now, however, in the realization branch, God does look at me and see Christ because now life from the Holy Spirit, divine life has come into me. The life of Christ is has come into me. But in justification, it is not that. This is a reckoning branch. And so what justification is, is simply pardon, the forgiveness of sins. That God, for the sake of Christ, God, when white, while I was still a sinner, when we are ungodly, uh, God sent Christ to die for our sins, which became a propitiation, an atonement for our sins. And on the basis of that and that alone, God, uh, when we look to, to Christ in faith, believing in God's condition for our salvation, then we are, then he pardons us. He says, I will not count your sin against you either in this world or the next. It's pardon, it's forgiveness. It's like in the parable where Jesus spoke of the, of the unjust servant who came and, and couldn't pay his enormous debt and he fell down. And when, when the king said, sell him and his family to pay the debt, oh, have mercy on me and I'll pay all. And the king, seeing that he could do nothing and couldn't pay it back, simply canceled the debt. And that's what God, that's what justification is. And it's neither more nor less than that. It's kind of a legal state. It changes our relationship to God with regard to that. That is a reckoning branch. Now, uh, and one thing that, that confused me a lot about this is, well, isn't there some good in us? Are we totally, are we totally bereft of good? What about philanthropy? What about when people, and Wesley talks about when, when people feed the poor or clothe the naked, and yet they have not been justified. They haven't believed on Christ. We see that all over the world. Uh, pagan goodness. And, uh, but the issue is, for, our, for us to be reconciled to God, God has given one condition and made one provision, and that is Christ. And if we reject God's one provision, then, then all of the things that we do, uh, do not profit us toward bringing us back into right relationship with Jesus. When we ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
good and evil got tangled up. And so there's no good in this world without some evil connected with it. And all the evil that comes to us has some good connected with it that makes it even more deceptive. It's like the two can't get apart. But isn't there some good? So, I mean, uh, people may be born with, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm born with some vices, but isn't there some good in human nature? But uh, all of that is common to fallen Adam. All of that is under the curse of God. All of that is under death. So that even pagan goodness does not reconcile us to God. Otherwise, Christ died in vain. If there's any goodness in us that can reconcile us to God, Christ died in vain. So, um, uh, and I love this statement that Wesley made. When faith in Christ, when faith comes to us, it does not find goodness in us. The faith of justification, it brings goodness to us. So, uh, so there is no goodness in me until justification, which is the free gift of God based only not on anything in myself, because I am ungodly and, ju and God justifies the ungodly, uh, but based on the propitiation made by Jesus Christ. He humbled us in the dust. All men, if they will ever be saved, must come through that narrow gate of absolute abject ungodliness, the truth before God, and receive his free gift. Okay, that's the reckoning. Now, the realization is the holiness. It's the sanctification part, and it's two branches of salvation. It's not an add-on to salvation. It's the realization part, not just the reckoning, but the realization. And uh, so justification addresses our past sins. God forgives them. He, 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 he forgives them and cancels, and cancels that because of Christ. But it does not deal with ongoing sin. So that's, that has to do with sanctification. That has to do with real righteousness. That's the thing that my heart longed for and that I couldn't say, well, I'm, I, I can't, I can't, I don't have no assurance of salvation if there's no real righteousness, if I've not really been saved from sin. Uh, and so this is where sanctification, regeneration is the initial entrance into sanctification. And as Wesley says, regeneration actually comes uh, at the same time as justification, but it has a different nature because it's the real righteousness, whereas justification is the reckoning of righteousness. But he says, uh, uh, if any doctrines within the whole company compass of Christianity may be properly termed fundamental, they are doubtless these two, the doctrine of justification and that of the new birth, which he says in a, the new birth is really the entrance into sanctification, into holiness. The former justification relating to the great work which God does for us, in forgiving our sins. The latter, the great work which God does in us in renewing our fallen nature. In order of time, neither of these is before the other. In the moment we are justified by the grace of God through the redemption that is in Jesus, we are also born of the Spirit. But in order of thinking, as it is termed, justification precedes the new birth. We first conceive his wrath to be turned away and then his spirit to work in our hearts. So, so there is the reckoning, the forgiveness of sins that sets me right and brings me back into the favor of God. But then there's the realization by regeneration, by the birth of the Holy Spirit in me, which carries, which is a holy life. It's the holy life of God born into me. Um, holiness is a seed which starts there at regeneration. Uh, what happens in an instant in the spirit happens over time. It's stretched out in time in the natural. For instance, when we, when we ate of the tree, something happened instantaneously in us where, uh, where our soul died and was separated from God in an instant. But that did not happen naturally in our body instantaneously because there's something about the nature, about our human nature, where God stretches out this reality over time corruptibility started in us immediately, and we corrupted and, and came to the fullness, the fullness of death in our, in our natural state, in our body. It's the same way with sanctification. There's a, there is this initial sanctification, and this new life, uh, this new holy life of the Holy Spirit, born in us by God, the work of God, as much the work of God as the propitiation made to pay, to, to uh, 
on the basis of which our sins would be forgiven, as much the work of God, but, but of a different kind of participation in the divine nature, the actual divine life coming into us, this life has an inheritance. It is, it, it is not simply a gradual growth forever. It is that, uh, but there's an inheritance. There's a fullness. There's a coming of age. And that's, I believe, what, what Wesley spoke of as entire sanctification. Um, and it is approached by a gradual growth. And then once that work of entire sanctification, which is the cleansing of the heart from all sin, it's as impossible as justification is to us. We can't be justified. There's no good in us. There's no power in us. But God, by his mighty power, does it in the reckoning. And he does it in the realization where he cleanses our heart from sin and he fills our heart with love. But even that then goes on to grow unto the fullness, to grow up into him who is our head and to become, uh, to, to grow into the fullness of Christ. This new life has an inheritance that we grow, that we come into. And that inheritance comes in a, in a moment. Just like Abraham uh, had an inheritance in Canaan, though, though he entered upon a life and a journey with God, uh, there was an inheritance and a promise and, and a fulfillment. And even in that end, it went on. The story went on. Uh, but so I wanted, and the, the final thing that I want to say is I've been, uh, I've been preaching through the map uh, as, uh, as Stan has has laid out, and we're actually this coming Sunday getting ready to speak about crossing the Jordan. So, and we started in January. So this has been a long, uh, this has been a long series. Um, but without both branches, justification and sanctification, we don't have an, we have an incomplete understanding of salvation. It's not I'm saved and sanctified. Uh, if anything, it's in salvation, I am justified and sanctified. And uh, in the map story, we, we have to tell the story both of the Exodus and of the conquest. He brought us out so that he could bring us in. If you leave off one part of that story, you don't have, you've got an incomplete telling of the story. The parts don't, they don't have their completion. You, you can't see the whole thing. And in the same way, if you leave off sanctification from an understanding of salvation, you don't have the complete story. Um, so that's what I wanted to share today. I, I'm, I'm loving this class and processing through it. Um, so, and, and looking forward to, uh, to sending some of this stuff at my congregation after we finish the map. <laughs> so. But Dan, you, you, uh, you, uh, we love your, uh, your enthusiasm and, Deeply appreciate how clearly you shared that. That was that was wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, it, it's going to be a joy to see where you continue to take this because uh, with your again your your gifts and graces and uh, uh, and and sharing the map there, I know your folks are going to deep are are deeply appreciating that. So thank you. Any, anybody want to comment? Anybody want to share a, share a word here and reflection? Thank yeah. You, thank you. Oh. I was just going to say whether we heard that or before or not, that was, that was good. That was a good word. So thank you. Would you remind me again, which sermon you focused on? Cause I, it reminded me, I need to go back and forth through this again. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of focused on justification by faith. Um, but the three sermons that I, that kind of really have gotten into me uh, was on working out our own salvation and justification by faith and um, what was the third one? Uh, oh, oh, that, that's different. And the new birth is also is also one that I've been looking at. So, but justification by faith is really a, a great laying out of that. Thank you very much. Great. Anyone else? I, I, I want to say amen. Uh, I just taught, uh, I just taught readings in, in John Wesley in Spanish at our, our school in Mexico City. And uh, it was so revolutionary for um, a lot of our students. Um, and we, um, we found a lot of, uh, a lot of, a response. Lot of response. 
we've got a lot of response from Psalm from uh, Sermon 43, the Scripture way of salvation. Um, I I would recommend that to anyone. It's not it's not quite so technical. It's much more much more practical and uh, uh, not not so much uh, dependence on uh, the terminology of theology. Very biblical, of course. Uh, and I, I really appreciate the fact that uh, to some theologians, John Wesley was not a theologian uh, because he never wrote a, a systematic theology, but he wrote a biblical theology. His sermons are, are exactly that. So I say amen and uh, good job. <laughs>